Because the loudest voice you hear, and I've said this on the show before, the loudest voice you hear is your own voice. And when the world is shitting on you, and your friends are shitting on you, and your family's shitting on you, and every everybody's coming at you, the only person to keep you up out of the bullshit is you. You. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Big Dog Podcast. I'm Josh Wilson. I'm in here with my main dude, Logan, my son. What's up, son? What up? Miss you. I haven't seen you in a bit. Yeah, like a week, I think. I know. And then it's going to be a, another week. It'll be two weeks. You get I back you. Monday or? Monday afternoon. Cool. I'll be back. So how's how, how do I sound? Do I sound all right? Yeah. We got our new makeshift studio set up and trying to make sure everything sounds okay for the people. Yeah, good. All right, what have you been up to since I've been gone? Practicing the pictures and just uh, trying to get better at, or learn more of the Riverside stuff so the podcast can look a little better, the quality nice. And stuff. Nice. Everybody, we are um, using a new format for capturing particularly our remote podcasts where you know either our guests aren't in studio or if I'm traveling and I just we weren't happy with the quality of how things are coming through the last couple months and so we've changed vendors that we're using and really excited about this new product and opportunity and how it's going to present to you and so you know we're excited to see how it goes so hopefully you're noticing some changes guys as you're watching in the show if you're listening you won't really notice much of a difference at all but if you're a fan of watching or you follow us on social media um, hopefully you'll be seeing changes and those changes you believe are a big improvement i know that i'm hoping to see a big improvement so nice so working on photography meeting up with the teams figuring out riverside that's pretty cool learning a lot of new stuff yep nice i like your shirt thanks me too this guy when i walked in today asked if i was a uh, longhorn fan nah son we're a team jw fan got that done while i'm out here yeah it looks sick it's pretty good i'll tell you the inside of the arm was a little spicy yeah, it seems like a more sensitive area. Getting some work done back here today. Nice. So, I'm excited about it. I don't want to say I'm addicted, but I would say in 45 years I had zero tattoos. And since January, I have two, three, Can't four, count them. five. This will be the sixth one after today. It's and it's not like... Month. Yeah, you know, one a month. I'm averaging a little like 1.2 a month. And the thing that's funny is I was talking to somebody and they're like, oh, well, I've got like 15 tattoos. And they started showing them to me. And they're all like these itty-bitty like little things, right? I'm like, well, how many tattoos does that count as? <laughs> right? Like, how is each one of those dots a tattoo? Is each one of those letters a tattoo? Like, what? I don't know. I like it, though. I get lots of compliments on it. So what else has been going on? Not much. Jenna got home today or last night. Oh boy. Yeah. She scared mom this morning. She, um, your mom had just let the dogs in from feeding them and was giving them water. And like 30 seconds later, the garage door opened and it was Jenna scared the crap out of her, but she was going to work out at the gym. So it's good Smart. stuff. You excited? Yeah. Y'all made it first year down. Mm -hmm. It's pretty dope. You look yeah. thrilled. Yeah. She's doing summer school at, uh, Thomas Nelson, I believe. Nice. All right. Boy, you look so stressed out. Nope, good. You just checking all the buttons but and all the stuff. I got to look down here, but the camera's up here. So I'm like looking down the whole time. <laughs> You're working. All right, well, let me let me jump in and talk a little bit. Guys, I want to talk today, and this is something I, I struggle with. I think I'm getting better with it, but I struggle with it. And, you know, I, I think everybody does from time to time. But, like, our attitudes are so, so important. And our attitudes play so much into how... Not just like how our days go, but how our relationships go, how our lives go. My son would tell you, anybody who knows me would tell you, I'm not known for always having the best attitude. I can be very aggressive. I can be short-tempered. I look angry 99% of the time, even though I'm really not angry most of the time. Right, Logan? Like I'm not right. genuinely an angry person. I just have, they call it resting bitch face, RBF, which I think is super rude to women because I've probably got the worst case of RBF. Like they call it RAS, RAF, resting asshole faces. I guess if you're a dude, I don't know. Either way, it's not nice, but I got it. And I could be having the best day in the world. I'm sitting there like this. 
You look so shocked. Yeah. People, people are like, dude, what's wrong? I'm like, nothing. I just want a million dollars. You know, that's just how I look. And, and it is what it is. I'm always thinking about something and focused on something. And, you know, the, the thing is, while I don't, I'm not known for always being bubbly and happy. That's interesting. I, I wonder if it's going to be, and guys, this is the first time using this software. So I'm just going to talk through it as we're doing it. I'm, I keep it real on here. So it'll be interesting to see Logan, if the, the blur it just did is yeah. actually on the final. That was weird. I don't know what that was about. Yeah. So anyway, uh, we're going to find out. So anyway, you know, while I look frustrated or angry or pissed, like genuinely, I, I am a, a happy person. I am not a peaceful person. Like I'm, I, I, I don't know. And what I mean by not being a peaceful person is it is rare that I feel at peace. You know, it's it. one day I hope to, I hope to create an environment and a life where I feel peace. When I'm with my wife, I feel peace peace when i'm with my kids most of the time particularly as they're older uh, i feel a sense of, of of peace but it's always momentary as soon as they're away from me there there isn't peace i, I and I, I think that's me i don't necessarily think it's environmental i just don't i'm not a peaceful person there's always something up always something going on now not being a peaceful person doesn't mean i'm a violent person doesn't mean like i'm i'm about chaos i just i always feel there's something to be done there's something to be improved there's something that needs to be worked on and so rarely do i find myself at peace while i don't always have the best attitude or i can appear to be aggressive i am always very confident i am always very optimistic and what i mean by that is challenges don't scare me challenges don't wreck me um challenges do not hold me down challenges do not call me cause me to quit challenges do not call me to make this to or cause me to make decisions out of fear problems and challenges do not necessarily make me change my plans or my vision or my mission i see problems and challenges and events that may not be what i had hoped as opportunities to learn and to grow and maybe improve processes that i'm currently going through maybe how i envision something happening isn't happening exactly how i envisioned it and as circumstances arise and it's like oh it wasn't exactly how i envisioned it a lot of times people will just quit and they will stop working towards that dream working towards that goal working on that relationship because it's not going exactly how they had hoped or envisioned it would go whereas me i'm just like okay address the problem figure it out how do we continue to move forward towards that whatever and man every day i feel like i'm talking to people that just generally have a shit attitude and they're going through stuff and it's tough. And I understand going through things. I go through shit all the time. Everybody does. No one's al alone in that. No one's isolated. Like trouble doesn't just focus on one person. Everybody I know has troubles. Everybody I know has shit that they struggle with. It's not unique to you. The world isn't just shitting on you, but man, it sure is about your attitude and how you respond to it and how you deal with it though. And more people get so hung up on woe is me or this and that and the fucking economy and politics and blah, blah, blah bullshit rather than focusing on what they can actually control and do. And they don't credit enough. They do not give enough credit credit to what saying shit like that does to their reality. They're taking shit that are hypotheticals and they're fucking up their reality because they are so focused on negative bullshit. Like everybody who's suffering and struggling because of the economy or because of the current political climate or because, you know, you know, they, 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 eight bad chicken because like everybody who's complaining <laughs> over whatever thing is happening to them that shit is happening to everybody and you've got winners and losers all these things winners are having to deal with economic bullshit also winners and successful people are having to deal with the same political climate as losers stop talking to yourself like you're a loser stop convincing yourself that you're that you deserve to lose we got to stop doing that because the loudest voice you hear, and I've said this on the show before, the loudest voice you hear is your own voice. And when the world is shitting on you and your friends are shitting on you and your family's shitting on you and every, everybody's coming at you, the only person to keep you up out of the bullshit is you. You. It's not how other people perceive your attitude. It's how you receive your attitude. How do you talk to yourself? What are you filling your mind with? 
And if it's always chaos and always a struggle and always a problem, how's that? How's that Taylor Swift song go, Logan? I don't shake it off. No, but hey, that would be a good I, I one too, though. I don't know. <laughs> What's the one that I'm the problem? It's me. I hey, I don't really. Listen it's me. To it. I'm the problem. It's me. It's how one of them things go. Something that's like more, that. It's more your thing. I don't know. It, it, I don't it is. I I got Tay Tay playing twenty four seven. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> Not really. But anyway, the, the, some of that shit goes like that. It's like she says, <laughs> hi, it's me. I'm the problem. It's me. And right. Like it, it's not the economy. It's not the political climate. It's not your, you know, asshole husband. It's not your cheating wife. It's not like the, the, the person that you choose to keep going back to who is uber negative in your, in your relationship and is toxic for you. And you keep going back over and over and over again. None of these people are the problem. You're the problem. You're the problem. Your husband of all these years is a total asshole, and he speaks to you poorly, mistreats you, never honors you, never loves you, never never is, is caring. You know, it's just always just, just being an asshole. And I'm not saying physically, but it's just, just not a joy to be around and, and just sucks. Like, you, okay, he sucks. You don't got to be with him. You know, your wife, total pain in the ass. No matter what you do, nothing's right. Just wearing you out constantly. Never supportive of you. Never encouraging of you. Never believing in you. Yeah, it's terrible. I wouldn't want to deal with that. My biggest hype man is my wife. And I need that. I need that support. I need that encouragement. I I can't be me without it. You know, I, I need I need my kids to acknowledge that I'm an okay dad every once in a while, right? I tell my things <laughs> that I tell myself I am, but every once in a while, like Logan's great about that. Logan's always encouraging, you know, and Kiki, she, she can be, <laughs> but Kiki's kind of wired more, a little more like me. So she's not always the most encouraging, but when she is, it's really, really great. But my wife, she's so supportive and she's so encouraging and she's so motivated and I'm so motivated by her. Even if she didn't say anything, I'm still motivated by her and by my kids because of the life I want to provide for them. Things I want to be able to do with them and experience with them and for them. Like that wakes me up every day motivated to go. Guess what? I'm still dealing with the same political bullshit. I'm still dealing with the same economy. I'm still dealing with the same employee issues. I'm still dealing with the same dramatic ass people on social media. I'm still dealing with all that too. No one's insulated from it. How do you deal with it? What are you listening to the most? Change your group up. Change the amount of people who, who, who who's influencing you. If you're hanging around with 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 terrible shit attitude people who are nonstop bitching and complaining about stuff, guess what? You're going to be the next one. If you're not already, you're going to be the next one. To the flip of that, though, if you associate yourself with people with great attitudes, people who are focused on improving themselves, people who are focused on winning, guess what you'll become? The same way. If you're broke right now and you don't want to be broke, figure out a way to stop hanging out with broke people. Because if you get around enough people who aren't broke, the odds are, soon enough, you won't be broke either. So don't bitch about being broke and all you do is hang out with people who talk about being broke stop taking money advice from people who are broke stop taking relationship advice from people leaving their sixth marriage like, what are we doing you control all this stuff you control it winning or losing people are all dealing with the same shit big shit those big overarching problems Everybody's got the same ones. And then everybody's got their own individual shit that they're dealing with. What's your attitude towards it? How are you responding towards it? Because if your attitude sucks, if your attitude's terrible, I can assure you, your conversations are terrible. You're out there trying to build your business. My salespeople I'm talking to now, you're not selling shit with a bad attitude like that. This is a market that is 100% built on relationship selling. Relationship selling. They gotta feel like they know you. They gotta feel like they can trust you and they need to like you. And if you got a shit attitude, that's coming out of your personality. You're not making no sales. I tell my sales team all the time, man, whatever's going on in life, you got to check it at the door. Because if you bring it in here, you can't communicate effectively with these 
prospects. You're not going to be tuned in to hear their needs so that you can actually offer a genuine solution to them. So how are you responding? How are you dealing with these things? You have to discipline yourself to separate. You got to discipline yourself to build up such a, a confidence and a, to- a, a lack of tolerance for the BS that it doesn't even impact you anymore because you don't allow it to have a presence in your day-to-day life because it's all there. And today we're either going to hear bullshit or we're going to hear good things. You know what happens today when I hear bullshit? Turn it off. I'm moving on. I'm scrolling by it. I'm deleting the email. I'm sending it to somebody else to deal with because it's not my bullshit to deal with. Other people's drama, theatrics, and bullshit, it's not yours either. Stop chasing it online and following it on social media. Oh my gosh, do you see this? Oh my gosh, do you see that? What what does it serve? What does it serve? Some shit's funny. And now there's an entertainment value. I'm okay with that. But if... If, you know, over 5% of your conversations are, oh, did you see this? Did you hear that? Did you da 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 Stop it. Stop it. Really, it shouldn't be any of your, your life about that crap. But you got to stop because it's not serving you well. Is your attitude serving you well? Is the energy you put out to others serving you well? If all you ever focus on is doom and gloom, I can promise you it's not. Shit's going to be there regardless. Why not tighten up and focus on your own stuff? Why not tighten up a little bit of a better attitude? Tighten up, figure out how to improve yourself to where you can get beyond the bullshit. There's your title, Logan. Beyond the bullshit. BTB. Like it. Well done. Put it on a (laughs) t-shirt. Put it on a t-shirt. So figure that out if you're listening to this. I get it. Shit happens. It's an interesting time. Doesn't mean it has to be a bad time. Doesn't mean it has to be a bad time. If you're not where you want to be, every once in a while you do got to look back and see how far you've come. Well, I can't get to where I want to be because of this. Okay. I want to just take a second, look back and be like, damn, I'm glad I'm not in that spot anymore. Damn. I'm so much closer to where I'm trying to get than where I was one, two, three, four, five years ago. Look at what we've done. Look how far we've gotten. We're getting there. We're doing the work. It's not, ugh, I'll never get where I want to be. Dumbass, you don't deserve to be there yet. There's work to do. You deserve to be exactly where you are. It's a product of your efforts, your attitude, your relationships, and your focus, and your discipline. You're just in the process. Stop worrying about where you're at or where you're not at. Be excited about where you are and know it's just another step. And when you look back next year and you look back two years from now, you'll be looking back and you'll see this spot and you're like, that was a time. Yeah. Or two years from now, you're going to look back and you're gonna look down and you're in the same exact spot and that's 100 percent up to you that's got jack shit to do with economy political climate or other people we control and choose everything as far as our response goes and our efforts so focus on yours starting right now focus on yours appreciate y'all listening hopefully this is a cool experience on video for the folks watching and we're gonna catch you next time with logan and i on the big dog podcast 